it's been quite an awesome year in gaming so far, despite this champagne sickness that we're going through. Greetings, Gemstones. It's your boy, Templeton Page Taylor. Welcome to a brand new episode of Hidden Gem. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And today, I actually want to talk about quite a few games that have come out this year so far. It's not even halfway over. Now, granted, we're dealing with this pandemic, uh, ironically named after a beer. I know it's not probably cool to say that, but I mean, there, you know, it is. Um, interestingly enough, though, that first name is also Spanish for crown, and there's also a reference to Resident Evil about a particular uh, thing that goes on in that game. Ironically enough, starting with the same letter, uh, the letter C, and um, ending in the other word. So, but I probably can't say that particular uh, game reference because of what we're not allowed to do on here. So, with that ended, uh, let's get it started. And one of the first games I want to actually talk about is Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. <clears throat> uh, this game, according to many people who have played this game, I personally have not, say that it is probably the best true source material to the game itself. Now, from what I have seen, it looks like a lot of the other Dragon Ball Z games where it's open world arena with a little bit of RPG elements thrown in there. Uh, it's also got a pretty interesting concept with the actual power meter or the key or chi, whatever word you just decide to use. And that bar basically atones to everything with your, uh, your key blasts, uh, your transformations, the uh, energy that you use for everything is all based along that bar, which seems pretty cool. Uh, but I also, uh, I, I like how a lot of the animations are. Um, it is very true to the original US version of the cartoon, which is really awesome. Um, it's gotten high scores online. A lot of people really enjoy it. And I think it's a good way to start out this video with a really uh, uh, popular title that, you know, at least everyone's heard of, if not fallen into. Now, personally, I was a Dragon Ball Z fan back in the day. Uh, Vegeta's my boy. He's always going to be my boy. And, uh, it, blah, 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 sorry. <laughs> and then I basically finished it off with Dragon Ball GT. I'm one of the few people who liked GT. I love the concept of Super Saiyan 4, although I think what they could have done, instead of saying that it's Super Saiyan 4, is that they could have said that this is the Super Saiyan level when someone when a Saiyan transforms with their tail. And then our Super Saiyans 1, 2, and 3 are what a Super what Saiyan transforms into without a tail. And then they could have like built up on that. That would have been really cool. Uh, another game, game number two, is Neo 2, the uh, second title to the original game Neo, which uh, from what I was told and heard about is not uh, a really a good game, but Neo 2 apparently fixed a lot of stuff uh, that the original one didn't have. It looks like the combat is a lot better. Uh, you still, uh, you have the silent protagonist, kind of like creating your own character, like in an MMO sort of thing. And, uh, I guess, uh, you really have to watch where you're going in this game. Um, a lot of people say that they die all the time because they run under trees and you get crushed by monsters <laughs> all the time. Uh, death counts have probably been in the thousands, you know, people probably getting frustrated. But, you know, I mean, uh, the world looks great. Uh, the gameplay looks awesome. I like how the mechanics are in this one. Again, another one I personally have not played, but it still looks like a very 
very fun game to play. I've heard a lot of friends that I know around town say, hey, the game is definitely one you should try out because of how the combat has changed up so much in this game. And the gameplay is so much fun. The story is supposed to be a little bit better in this one as well, from what I've also been hearing about. Uh, so there we go. We have uh, Neo 2. I think that one is going to be one I want to try. I've tried to broaden my horizons and not stick strictly with JRPGs, although I like JRPGs. They are my favorite genre. But uh, this is one I might want to give a try. You know, it looks a uh, third person action type of game. And I enjoy games like that. You know, also getting a first person shooters. I'm a Deus Ex fan, you know, and I like playing Dead Space 3 as well. Uh, so there you go. We got a Neo 2 is another good one. Uh, the next one I want to talk about, number three, is an Xbox exclusive. It's Ori and the Will of the Wisps, which is a secondary game continuation away from Ori and the Blind Forest. And uh, if you guys are watching my channel and you know other YouTubers who watch this channel, uh, shout out to The Completionist. He uh, has played uh, Will of the Wisps and he's played uh, Ori uh, and the Blind Forest as well. He gives this game a really awesome uh, review. So definitely uh, check that out if you want to see something awesome. Um, I really love the way this game's art style is. I love the way this game's gameplay is. I love how they've got, they do a lot of storytelling without having any kind of a script whatsoever ever I as you guys know I love 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 visual storytelling because it just it's it touches me so much more you know it's so much more deeper and understanding um this game has been out for a little bit now uh I it's really cool it's basically about this little character a little guy named Ori and uh, when you end up going and seeing the creature that's kind of taking care of him, so to speak, uh, he ends up, I believe this guy ends up, this particular character, spoiler alert, if you haven't, uh, played the game or heard anything about it or want to figure it out yourself, um, uh, there's a spoiler right here, he does pass away in the beginning of the game, um, but, in, uh, this one here, uh, Will the Wisp, or he's more so trying to protect this baby outlet, from uh, the evil owl that, I guess he's like kind of from the first one as well, but then again, I could be wrong. Um, and it's really cool how these two kind of like slowly build up a relationship. It reminds me very much of, um, ah, geez, uh, why can't I think of the name of the game I've got it? Oh, Last Guardian. Uh, how you have to uh, build a relationship with um, Trico and you start out, you know, as like, he's not quite sure to trust you. And then later on, he ends up coming to help you. And from things that I've seen, it's kind of the same way, you know, like, he's kind of weary, eerie, you know, weary at first. Yeah, that's the right word. And then, you know, he ends up uh, uh, building up this relationship with Ori because Ori's, you know, so kind to him and gentle. So they create, they have that bond. It's a really cool thing. I and I love when characters do that in video games with their, uh, with their stories, you know, and I love the gameplay aspect, you know, he, you're basically like, you have powers in this one now. It's the first one you really didn't, which is kind of cool. Um, so it's really great that uh, Xbox gets that exclusively to their system because I know a lot of people like to harp on Xbox. Personally, I it's not my favorite system. I am a Sony fan because I've grown up with all the Sony systems. But I did have an Xbox 360 at one time. I played you know games like Crisis Core. I played Tomb Raider on it. So that was those, And those games were really, really fun. I'm sorry, not Crisis Core, Crisis. Uh, Crisis 2, Crisis 3, I played those, you know, the Tomb Raider games as well. Um, so Xbox is an excellent system, it's just not my cup of tea, but if you do have an Xbox One, definitely try to get this game. Uh, I promise you probably will not be disappointed, because there's a lot of people who give this game a lot of high praise. Okay, um, another game I want to talk about, which is also an exclusive, it's a Nintendo Switch exclusive, it's uh, Animal Crossing New New Horizon. And uh, uh, strictly for the Nintendo Switch, as the Animal Crossing games are very, very popular. Um, 
One thing I think is really awesome about this game is uh, actually news that I found out about. There was a couple who wanted to get married and they were not able to get married. Their wedding had to be canceled due to what's going on in the world right now. So what they ended up doing was they got married in Animal Crossing. And I think that is just so awesome. And I'll be honest with you, like I know there's a lot of MMOs that you can do that, you know. I believe you can get married in uh in WoW and I know you can get married in a game called Alids Online, which is one of the first MMOs I actually personally played myself and I enjoyed playing it. Uh and I always think aspects like that are cool because you know, in MMOs it's more like, you know, if you're married it gives you some kind of boost and some some stat or whatnot. But the fact that since these guys could not get married in real life, the fact that not only did they get married in a video game, but it made headlines, headline news. And that is really, really awesome to see and hear about, you know? And that right there just not only shows love for the, for the people, you know, who play this game, but the, that couple, you know, congratulations to them. Unfortunately, I don't know their names, uh, but it's really awesome that they decided to at least do something as romantic, you know, at least in my eyes, as that. Um, the Animal Crossing games are also very, very fun games to play. I've played a couple of them on, um, uh, I want to say I had a Nintendo DS years ago, and I played a couple of Animal Crossing games, and I enjoyed them. And if you're a big fan of Animal Crossing, then definitely I would say jump on Animal Crossing New Horizon. It's a really, really awesome game. Not only to watch people do playthroughs and walkthroughs and videos online, but it's just an awesome game, an awesome game to have, an awesome game to play. If I had a Switch, personally, I would probably get this game, absolutely, for sure. Um, another game I want to talk about is Resident Evil 3. Now I know there's some people who may who may harp on me about this because of the gameplay time. And yeah, Resident Evil 3 is a very short game and a lot of stuff has been cut out of it from the original. And I can understand why hardcore fans would be so upset about something like that, but it did only come out a year after the Resident Evil 2 remake and even though the Resident Evil 2 remake still had some still had quite a few changes, you know. I think they did a better job on that one personally as opposed to this one, I played the RE3 uh, demo, and I did enjoy playing that very much. It was a really awesome uh, experience to play. I love uh, coming back, you know, and playing as Jill Valentine again, you know, and, you know, playing in Raccoon City brought back a lot of memories of when I was a kid, uh, because I never played RE3, but I had friends who played Resident Evil 3. And so I used to watch them play it all the time. And so it was all, you know, even though I didn't play it, just the experience of watching somebody play a game, you know, and having those, you know, which were, we never called them jump scares back then, you know, but that's what they were. And those experiences, you know, playing the games in the dark, you know, was, was, was awesome. And playing this one, this demo at least, was a very, very fun game. And... I've got a coworker at work who also bought it, and he's he said that he's really enjoying it. It's a really fun game to play, and you know, Nemesis can be kind of menacing, but a lot of his um, appearances are scripted, so to speak. So he doesn't just like jump out at you. How like Mr. X was just all over the place, and it was just more foreboding, and you know, you know, you just were always concerned of whether you were going to open up a door or walk down a hallway, and here. Here's this uh, impenetrable force, you know, coming at you. Nothing you can do. Um, but still, it's a great, a great remake. It looks amazing, you know. The gameplay is fun. The mechanics are pretty interesting. Uh, you know, the inventory. So again, I only, play, I only played the demo, so it wasn't a very large inventory. Um, I like the fact that you got to go around and like uh, shoot those little bobbleheads. It's pretty neat, and uh, I think it's really awesome that uh, they're able to. Uh, get that out when they did. Now I know they probably could have taken more time, but you know, with what's going on, I understand why a lot of game developers and companies are trying to, you know, rush their games and publishers are trying to rush their games and get them out, you know, because, you know, of what's going on and like, you know, uh, recently we've had like Final Fantasy VII uh, remakes uh, being 
uh, held off on it by Amazon and other websites as well. Um, I have ordered a refurbished laptop on Walmart.com and it's supposed to be here by the 29th, which is fine. But it was funny because on my account, like they took the money out, they've put it back, they've given it back to me, they've taken the money out and given it back to me. Uh, so, you know, it's just because of the whole online thing. Um, so there's that. It's more of a tangent. Sorry, guys. But uh, yeah, you got Resident Evil 3. That's another great game that we've put out. And, uh, you know, these games are looking fun. They're looking interesting. I really enjoy, uh, you know, watching videos and seeing gameplay and all these other things. Um, now, here's a, uh, a game that I have personally played. And that is Persona 5 Royal for PS4, you know, exclusive to PS4, Persona games. Uh, Persona is one of my favorite series. Uh, it's funny, actually, I, I started out with Persona 3 years ago when I was in my early 20s and I literally walked up to a guy in the Game Crazy store that we had way back there in Vegas, way back when, and I walked up to him and I said, uh, he's like, can I help you out? And I said, well, I'll be honest with you, I've got a PS2 and I'm looking for something brand new. Brand new that's uh, come out. And he literally just grabbed Persona 3 off of the shelf and he handed it to me and then he grabbed Wild Arms 5. Actually, no, I asked for Wild Arms 5. He, but he grabbed Persona 3 and he asked me if I've ever played a Persona game. I told him, no, I haven't. And he was like, well, if, you've, if you want to try something new, something different, and you like JRPGs, you know, but you also like story, he goes, this is a game for you. I was like, yeah, okay, you know, why not? I'll give it a try, you know? I mean, you know, uh, I, I needed something new in my life back then, at that time. And uh, I remember I put it in, and uh, immediately uh, what hooked me was the intro of Persona 3. And I just thought that was so amazing, and I loved it. And I know it's going to sound kind of silly, another little tangent, but every time I see anything that, you know, had any kind of animated scenes, immediately it reminded me of Lunar, Silver Star Story Complete on the PS1. I, if I remember correctly, again, you know, I'm, all, I'm going on 39 in July, you know, like, you just got to give me credit on this. But I believe that was actually the first game I ever played that had animated cutscenes and full-on voice acting. And that game was just so amazing to me in my eyes. And so when I saw the opening for Persona 3, it was just mind-blowing to me. And then I loved how dark the story was. I love when stories get dark and they have some realism to them and it's a little, very creepy. Uh, and then, uh, they, of course, I played Persona 4 and... That one started out kind of interesting. I like the gameplay mechanics in Persona 4 over Persona 3. Uh, but I like the, st the dark story of Persona 3. And then, you know, then I've played Persona 5. And I didn't platinum that game. I got 76% in the trophies. And my one of my hard drives ended up corrupting. And I ended up losing all the data on, those, on that hard drive. And Persona 5 was one of them. Of course, I did beat the game. I did get the uh, trophy for the ending, and I got about 76% of the trophies because I actually found a walkthrough online where you can complete all your confidants in one single playthrough. So it is possible. People say it's not. It is possible to get all your confidants in a single playthrough. Um, and then now we have Persona 5 Royal, which is more of a remaster of the original Persona 5. And the reason why I say that is because you're still playing the same Persona 5 game, but they've added a lot more story, a lot more gameplay. Uh, you have a new character, Kasumi, uh, who's actually your younger uh, young underclassman, so she calls you Senpai. Although, I do feel like they did give away a little bit of a spoiler in the beginning of the game. And... Adding to the story, they end up talking about a 15-year-old girl uh, on the car ride home from when they first go to the school, if you guys, if any of you have played Persona 5. Um, so if you have played it, I don't want to spoil anything for you guys like that. But I personally feel like they, they threw in a spoiler way, way too early into the game. Um, but that's just me. Although, the they've added so much of the storyline. They've added some new interesting gameplays. I'm still only playing through the first palace. And uh, 
just a few things that they've changed up, you know, with the new grappling hook that you have. And they've changed up a little bit of the puzzles and things like that. It's so crazy awesome. Uh, and then they have these uh, baton passes. And what's cool is if you can get your fourth player, your fourth person on your team, uh, baton pass all the way to them, they can use any ability that they have without using any HP or SP. And I've done that. And that's really cool that they were able to do do all that. And then the everyone has their all-out attacks, of course, which is uh, really great. Um, if you are a fan of Persona or never actually played Persona, I definitely recommend playing it. It's a really, ga really great RPG. It's a uh, really long original Persona 5. I had over 100, 101 hours on it, like I mentioned before. Um, this one will probably have quite a bit uh, more uh, to it. So I would definitely... Uh, recommend playing this game because it is such a fun game and it's a great game to get and it's definitely one that is awesome to have in a time that we're going through. Finally, the last game I'm going to talk about, well before I talk about the bonus one, is going to be Final Fantasy VII Remake and it's so great to finally get this one out because it was so many years of teaser trailers, and then they finally gave us a release date of uh, March 20th, and then they had to push that release date back to uh, April 10th, and now with uh, what's going on, and people having to get their copies, you know, later due to ordering, uh, online ordering and things like that, with uh, them trying to supply the hospitals, uh, it's finally here and uh it's a really fun game to play i the story they've added so much of this story um so many new gameplay mechanics or everybody plays so differently um i'm only personally on chapter three uh i've played as cloud i played as tifa i played as barrett they all have their own styles tifa is your monk class she Oh my God! There's so many ways you can uh, you can use her uh, Cloud's abilities with his swords, uh, you know Garrett Garrett <laughs> Barrett with his uh, with his uh, with his arm cannon and the way he can blast things, you know, and you can charge stuff after you shoot. It's really awesome. You uh, can grow your weapons up to level five. Every weapon can grow. You can gain abilities to. Uh, uh, add and use on other weapons so you can just stick with the buster sword once you level it up to level five but you can have a bunch of materia slots in there and um you know uh you just there's i mean it's so much fun to play there's so much to look out for in this game like i said i'm barely on chapter three <clears throat> right now i am trying to get a particular trophy with the dartboard game because i love playing darts in this game um it's really fun to do that. You have, one thing I have noticed is that your materia doesn't double in this game. So when you see a lot of videos that say, don't sell your materia, that's because your materia does not double after it's maxed out. I've maxed out a couple of things of materia. Um, the first grinding spot is actually in um, Sector 7 slums with 7th Heaven. And you can go all out with that. I basically leveled myself up to level 15 because I don't want to spoil too much. And I've uh, leveled up a few materia. I've uh, maxed out a couple of materia. But I want to try to move on with the story and see what else I can, uh, I can do, of course. But it's definitely a fun game to play. You can cap out your level at uh, 50 in this one. Uh, there's so many tips and tricks. There's videos out there that tell you about things that you didn't know about. Um, it's just, it's a beautiful looking game. Uh, one thing I thought was pretty interesting is that you actually get into a particular quest with Johnny from Six Seven Slums, and then when certain things happen, um, you can actually see his parents, like talk to his parents and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. There's a girl in the slums who actually uh, keeps count of how many enemies you killed, and she gives you uh, things for that. Um, there's a young man who can make materia, and he can sell it to you. You can buy things at a discount. I can go on and on and on. And that's just the first 30 chapters that I've played. Um, it is so much fun. I love switching between the characters. Uh, one thing that's pretty neat is that like enemies can actually jump on you and tackle you down. Or you know just like incapacitate you. And you can switch to another character in your party. And you can beat up that enemy. 
uh, to get them either off of your character or just to, you know, kill them all together and, you know, defeat them in the game. And it's really, really awesome. And uh, it's something I definitely recommend uh, getting, playing it. Uh, you will not be disappointed at all. And these are the games that have come out so far. Now, a bonus game I'm going to talk about is going to be Seiken Densetsu 3 or Trials of Mana. I always say Mana. They say Trials of Mana, but I always say Mana. Uh, on the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. And it's really awesome that they're getting... That game is actually getting a remake. Uh, so Persona 5 Royal is more of a remaster. And... This game is a remake of a 16-bit era Super Nintendo game that never came out in uh, in the States. And the fact that they've remade this game, uh, I've got the demo, I've played the demo also, it's a really fun game to play, is the fact that you can take your demo save and transfer all that to the actual game when it comes out, which is really awesome. And it's, I think more demos should do something like that, you know, because you play the game, you know, have them play only the first part of every level and then say, hey, you know, your game demo can say, you can save that and transfer to the, to the actual game when you decide to get the game. That is a really awesome concept and idea. The game looks good. It plays so well. It's super responsive with the attacks and the abilities. Um, Charlotte is super cute. I know she's not chibi and I mentioned chibi stuff. I love chibi stuff, you know, but Charlotte is a super cute character. I love playing as her. I love playing as Kyle in my, uh, previous video. Uh, it's a really great game. It comes out in April this month. You know, I believe the 24th is the release date for both systems. Definitely go for that one if you are a fan of the Mana series. See, what would be cool is if they remade Final Fantasy Adventure. So now we could have all the entire trilogy on uh, PS4 and Switch. That would be really, really cool. Uh, but that is definitely one that personally I would love to get, you know, but I don't want to go too crazy with RPGs right now. Play what I got and maybe get that sometime later on down the line is what I'm thinking about doing. And uh, there you go. These are the games that I think make your gaming experience a great game. The year's not even halfway over. We still got games like Cyberpunk 2077 coming out. You know, oh, um, I'm sorry. I don't want to leave out my uh, my PC gamers. My PC gamers. We've got Half Life Alex uh, coming out. Uh, came out on PC, and that game is really cool. It's based. It takes place like a few years before Half Life Two, and uh, you play as Alex. And it's more of like a virtual type of game, like you're like you're a virtual player, but you're playing a game on screen with your computer. And it's really cool, like your hands aren't connected to anything, you know, because they're virtual hands and things like that. But that gameplay looks really good. It sounds amazing. I can only imagine uh, you'll probably have to have a decent amount of gigs. I'd say probably eight minimum gigabytes of RAM is what I'm guessing, and a really awesome. Uh, um, Graphics card to play it, you know, like maybe i5, i7 or more, right? Uh, uh, an AMD, uh, where are they at? Are they at, are they still at three or five? I'm not, I don't really know too much about the, the cards, but that game for all you PC gamers looks flipping amazing. And from the reviews and the trades that I've seen, uh, if I was into PC gaming, it's definitely one that I would want to throw on my list for sure. And uh, I'm sorry all this stuff is out of order and everything else. I want to talk about that game, but I just forgot about it until uh, till just now. But yeah, there you go. So that right there is my full list of games that have come out this year so far. It's been a great gaming year, 2020. I know everyone's like, ah, you know, there's not a whole lot that we can do. But I mean, if you are into video games such as myself, then definitely, definitely hop on uh hop on the train and try any of these games. Of course, there's quite a bit more that has come out within this time that I've, uh, that we've had games come out. But these are just a few popular ones. I wanted to do, you know, some exclusives, you know, with Ori on Xbox, with Persona on, uh, and Final Fantasy on PS4, with, uh, 
Animal Crossing on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, so definitely, if you can, you know, if you have that extra cash, you know, and, you know, Uncle Sam is supposed to be paying all of us back here soon. Hasn't paid me back yet, but I know I'll be getting it sometime uh, in the near future. Um, take a little bit of that money and grab yourself something. Grab yourself a list, a game on my list. Grab yourself something that maybe I haven't listed. Feel free to uh, mention something that's come out that I haven't said uh, in my comments section. I'd really appreciate that. And uh, just so you guys know, this will be the end of today's video. Um, also, um, I'm going to be doing a, a bi-weekly thing from here on out. I'm going to be really focusing on putting out videos every other Saturday is what my goal is. So I'm gonna try my best to make video, get that content out for you guys, get this stuff out every couple of uh, every couple of weeks, so that way you guys can know when I'm gonna be on here, and you guys can look for my uh, look for my notifications. You know, um, I'm uh, so if you also if you guys want to get a hold of me, um, I will have a link to uh, my PSN network. Uh, down in the description below. If you want to do any uh, collaborations with me, feel free to email me. That is also going to be down below as well. Um, my PSN network name is going to be is Templeton Page Taylor. Uh, also, one word, Final Icarus, and it's got a picture of Igor from Persona Five as my cover photo. So, Templeton Page Taylor, Final Icarus, that is me. I'd love to add you. Uh, to my roster of friends on PlayStation Network, if you have PlayStation, uh, definitely uh, say hi to me. I would love to uh, maybe get some suggestions on there. You can say, hey, do a video on this, you know, or hey, you know, do a video on that or whatever. Um, also, guys, I am still working on my Detroit Become Human uh, review, and I've recently finished thousand arms and I'll be working on that review as well so that stuff is still going to be coming up you know it's just taking a little bit longer to get those things fleshed out and together the way I want them to be and something that you guys can actually enjoy so again feel free to always like comment subscribe hit that notification bell to see my latest videos on this channel and as always guys do me a favor in these hard times, you know, wash your hands, don't touch your face, you know, and stay shiny for me.